Okay, today we learned a new process for factoring. Yes, so we've already learned how to find the greatest common factor. We've learned how to factor with tiles, and now we're learning how to factor algebraically. Um, this really was, there were three phases to this process. There was organized, meaning where you collect all the information you can out of your problem and get it into your working space, which is your big TX. Then you split your, um, you split your X, and we do that by using our T to find factors that add, factors of A times C that add up to B, and then those become our new X's. And then we rewrite it in that format, and then we factor out the greatest common factor of each of these two pairs. That was a lot. I'm trying to make it simpler. My original thing was like just concentrated writing on this page. So I'm going to do three problems with you. The first one I'm going to do more slowly, and then I'm going to do the other ones a little bit quicker. Okay? So this first problem is x squared plus 9x plus 18. My first step is to find out what a, b, and c are. Now remember, a, b, and c come from our formula chart. Um, and our formula chart, we're, we're looking at standard form. So standard form of a quadratic equation has ax squared plus bx plus c. a is just a number. It is not like, for this one, a is not x squared. It's the invisible 1 in front of that. It's 1. b is 9. c is 18. Factoring is going to be a real nightmare if you don't get it in standard form first. So you want to make sure that you have it x squared, x, number. If one of those is missing, you put a zero in its place. Okay, so first of all, first thing we do is we find our A, B, and C. Next thing we do is we make our big Texas. Okay, and on our big Texas, we're going to take A times C. 1 times 18 is 18. That goes on top of the T. It goes on top of the X. And then B is going to go on the bottom of the X. All right? That's our first step. That's our organizing step. Our organizing step is finding our A, B, and C, and then filling out our big Texas so that we're ready to start. Okay? So that's the first step. We organize. Okay? The next thing we're going to do is we have to figure out how we're going to split our X. So we have to split this X. So our X squared comes straight down, our plus 18 comes straight down, but we got to figure out what two values we're going to split our x into, because we have to have four things in order for us to factor. So I need things that multiply to give me 18, but add up to 9. All right, so I'm going to start listing the ways I can get 18. I can do 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6, 4 doesn't go, 5 doesn't go. This is it. This is the only way that I can multiply to get 18. Okay. Now that I've figured this part out, now I'm looking down here. I need to figure out, uh, this is what multiplies to 18. Now I've got to see which ones add up to 9. Because remember, when we did, when we did tiling, we had, to, we had, to, they had to simplify to these values. So like this one here, I had two, I was able to cancel out two zero pairs. This multiplied, this 3 and 2 multiplied to give me negative 6. This negative 3 and 2, but it combined to give me negative 1. So I'm looking for a combination that will multiply to 18 and add to 19. Okay, so negative 1 plus 18 is 19. That is not it. 2 plus 9 is 11. Not it. 3 plus 6 is 9. Bingo. That's what I want. Okay, so here I'm going to put 3x and 6x. That's what I'm splitting my 9x into. I'm splitting it into positive 3x and positive 6x. Okay? These two, these two, um, these two expressions are equivalent because x squared, 3 plus 6 is 9x plus 18. I have equivalent expressions. All I've done is split my x so that I can actually do my factoring. That's step two, which is split your x. All right. Now we're going to go on to factoring. So for the factoring part, I'm going to do this in a different color so you can see it a little bit easier. I'm going to draw two big upside down division signs under. So I'm going to draw one under the first two and one under the last two. All right. And then I'm going to take the greatest common factor. Now, if it helps you 
you can rewrite that over here. x squared plus 3x, and just look at that one. Well, they have an x in common. x squared divided by x is x. 3x divided by x is positive 3. So if I rewrite that in factored form, it's going to be x times x plus 3. Okay? I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. I'm going to do it right here. These have a 6 in common, a positive 6 to be specific. If it's a 6, if it's a positive number, I'm not going to just put the number. I'm going to put it with a sign. Okay? 6x divided by 6 is x. 18 divided by 6 is 3. I know that I've done it right because I see the same number inside the parentheses. All right? And then the last step of factoring is, I hope this pen works, I'm going to write down the first thing I see in parentheses, x plus 3. And then I'm going to cross it off in that expression. Then I'm going to underline what's left. Well, what's left is x plus 6. So x plus 6 becomes my second factor. All right? This is our process. We organize, we split our x, and then we factor. Okay, so that's the first example. I'm going to do two more with you, and we're going to see how that goes. All right? So again, first thing, I organize. So I'm going to find my A, my B, and my C. So my, and, I, and this is in standard form, highest exponent, highest exponent, second highest, last. So I can literally just look at the numbers. A is 2, B is 5, C is negative 7. Notice that's a negative sign, so it's a negative C value. Okay? Remember, it's not 2x squared, it's 2. It's just the number. All right? Now I'm going to make my big T, my big X. Okay? I'm going to take my A and C, multiply them together. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. That goes at the top of both of these. And my B, 5, goes down at the bottom. All right? So that's step one. Step one is organize. Step two is split my X. So I'm going to start by finding all the factors I can, all the ways I can multiply to get negative 14, because I'm trying to figure out what I can multiply to get negative 14 that will add up to 5. Okay, well, I can do negative 1 times 14, 1 times negative 14, negative 2 times 7, 2 times negative 7. Okay, well, negative 1 plus 14 is 13. Nope. 1 plus negative 14 is negative 13. Nope. Negative 2 plus 7 equals 5. Oh, that's what I want. Just to check, 2 plus negative 7 is negative 5. So 2, negative 2 and positive 7 are the ones I want. Now, remember, if it's negative, we want to try and put it first. So here I'm going to put my negative 2x and my 7x. This is how I'm going to split my... Um, I'm going to split my, what's that thing called? My x, my x, split my x. So I leave the 2x squared alone. I split my 5x into negative 2x plus 7x, and then I leave my negative 7 alone. Okay? Okay, so that's phase 2. Phase 2. Now I'm ready to factor. All right? So... I'm going to do my upside down division signs, and I'm going to find my greatest common factor. So for this first one, I see that they have a 2x in common. Well, 2x squared divided by 2x is just x. Negative 2x divided by 2x is minus 1. All right, now I'm going to go over here. What do these have in common? Well, they have a 7, but it's a positive 7, so I put plus 7. In fact, whatever sign this one has is the sign I have to use down here. If this was minus 7, and that was plus 7, it doesn't matter. If, it's, if this is minus 7, i got to put a minus 7 down there. Okay? Now, they have a positive 7 in common. 7x divided by 7 is x. Negative 7 divided by 7 is minus 1. I know I did it right because those are the same number. I mean, the, what's in parentheses is the same expression. So I start by writing what's in the parentheses and crossing it out. Then I underline what's left, and what's left is 2x plus 7. All right? 
Last example I'm going to do is x squared minus 3x plus 2. Now this one is going to look a little different and pretty soon you're going to see why. I'm going to add my invisible one. Step one, organize. I'm going to find A, B, and C. This is written in standard form, so I just go down the line. 1, negative 3, 2. I draw my big Texas, and then I find A times C, which is 2, and it has to add up to B, which is negative 3. Phase 1 is done. All right, phase 2, I'm going to find my factors of 2. Well, it's 1 and 2, right? But that's not going to get me negative 3. Don't forget, you also have negative factors. So I could say negative 1 times negative 2. Negative 1 times negative 2 multiplies to positive 2 because I need to multiply to 2 and add up to negative 3. But negative 1 plus 2 gives me negative 3. So this is what I want. Negative 1x, negative 2x. Now I'm going to re re rewrite it with my x split. I leave my, x, leave my first term alone. I split this one into negative 1x minus 2x, and then I leave my plus 2 alone. Now notice here, since these are both negative, I couldn't really, I couldn't really put one of them first. I had to put them both because there were two of them. All right. Now that I've done that, I am ready for my last step, which is to actually factor. So I do my two little upside down um, division signs x squared and negative 1x both have an x in common. When I factor that x out, I have x minus 1 left. Now, negative 2x and plus 2, I know that whatever factor I pick, I have to make it negative because this is negative. If this is negative, then that has to be negative 2. Negative also. <laughs> okay, so negative 2x and 2 have a negative 2 in common. Negative 2x divided by 2x but, I'm sorry, negative 2x divided by negative 2 is x. 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. And since I've got the same thing, I know I did it right. Same thing in the parentheses. So again, I write down what's in the parentheses. x minus 1, cross it off, and then I underline what's left. That becomes my second factor, and that's my answer. I hope that this was helpful. Remember, you can always ask me questions, or Ms. Schultz, you can ask both of us questions tomorrow in class.